Hello, and welcome to the Crane Worldwide Logistics News Podcast, Coffee with Crane. I'm Joseph Patrick. In this week's episode, I'll be talking about some developments that you need to be aware of happening in the Suez Canal. Then, I'll try to clear up some container logistics myths, and we'll wrap up the episode with some troubles in South America that may greatly impact that area. And remember to stick around to the end for an all-new fun logistics fact. Now, let's get to the news. Well, I can already hear what you're going to ask. When will the situation in the Suez stabilize or simmer some? Well, as you know by now, developing a safe passage through the Red Sea has proved rather challenging. Many carriers are currently currying cargo using longer routes around the Cape of Good Hope. Questions in the market relate to consequences of the alternate route and how long the situation is going to continue. When speaking to CNBC last week, Mark Rhodes, Crane Worldwide Logistics' very own regional ocean product director for the Asia-Pacific region, had this to say, quote, The container shortage remains fresh in our memories from the COVID pandemic. The outbound leg from Asia to Europe is just the beginning of what could be more turbulent times ahead in 2024, unquote. So how does all of this affect you? Well, with the ocean freight rates and turbulence and ambiguity around the return to regular service operations through the Suez Canal, it's important that shippers work in close partnership with their providers to identify risks, again, not only in the short term, but also in the upcoming months. Your local Crane Worldwide Logistics representative is standing by now. Ask about the unique offerings that we've developed at webquery at craneww.com. That's W-E-B-Q-U-E-R-Y at craneww.com. Well, in our next story, I wanted to bring up something that often gets confusing, especially when dealing with the current global events, and that's container logistics. Believe it or not, there are a lot of common misconceptions about dealing with containers, so I wanted to separate some of the facts from the fictions. The first myth is one that many seem to jump to. If we need more containers, why not build more containers? Well, the reality is that there's already a backlog of new container orders and supply simply can't keep up with demand. New containers require a lot of lead time to manufacture and production is still reeling from the impacts of the recent global shutdowns. And While it makes perfect sense to simply buy something if you need more of it, this easy fix doesn't apply to containers in today's condition, so keep that in mind. Another common myth I've heard is that AI or better technology can solve these issues. While technology aids in planning, software isn't a catch-all solution. Current computer curricula can't completely calculate the ever-changing offsets, nor can they fully address the structural challenge of trade imbalances. Something that will help right now is more visibility to all containers across all modes. The transparency can help shippers identify patterns and opportunities. This data greatly helps in creating solutions for global optimization. And while high-tech solutions aren't going to do the work for you, Crane is here to help. We have developed a very thorough article that addresses not only these myths, but several others. We'll also share some industry tips to help you improve how you deal with your empty container logistics. You can find all of this and more over at craneww.com. Here, you'll find this full article, market updates, and trade advisories so that you can keep shipping your cargo the crane way. Well, in our last story today, I wanted to bring to your attention what's been happening in the South American country of Ecuador. Earlier this week, violent riots broke out throughout several areas, which caused the government there to declare a state of emergency for 60 days, and they've also issued a curfew. Currently, all entities of the public and private sector have been advised to telework from home, but international trade operations, including importing, exporting, and inspections, can continue to function normally at this time. While we're still seeing deliveries to and from Ecuador, be aware that ongoing risks could impede future shipping. So what do you think? Will the Ecuadorian exchanges and expostulations escalate or evaporate? Let me know in the comments section below. Well, that's it for the news, but I owe you another fun logistics fact. The storage of goods has historically been vital to all peoples and cultures, but where do the ancients house their crops and many abundant supplies? Archaeologists have discovered that warehousing of goods was common in many cultures. The oldest known proto-warehouses were pits dug in the ground and lined with stones which could then be covered with skins and soil. In today's high-tech world, we now have fully automated warehouses. Pre-programmed or AI-driven robots zip around fulfilling orders. This serves as further proof that we have learned nothing from the Terminator franchise. Well, friends, I hope that you were edified by this week's episode, and I I work hard to put these together every week, so before you go, please give me a like, share, comment, follow, and a five-star review. It all helps. So until next time, I'll have a hot cup waiting right here for you on the next episode of the Crane Worldwide Logistics News Podcast, Coffee with Crane. Goodbye.